Hey guys, the very first thing you want to do at this point is you want to mark the center points on, usually it's just the front and back center points, but because this is almost like a plaid, you need a side to side re reference too. So you have to mark the center point in all, all middle portions. So I'm going to go up and down first, 25. Try to be as precise as you can with this. So it's 12 and a half this way, and it's 14 and a half, so it's 7 and a quarter this way. So there's my bullet point right there. I'm going to take another reference point down here, and up here, which let's see if we get to the 14. Then we're going to draw a line. This is what I'm trying to aim for, because the fabric's only going to come around the top, right? There's my front, my top and bottom, right? So now I have to finish up getting my side to side. 11 and a half. 11 and a half. And draw a straight line. And I know I'm going to be good with my fabric, right? All right, so that's, that's the inside back, all ready to go. I got my top marked, I got all four points marked. Very good. Let's do our seat now. We got 16 here. We'll go down. That's 16 eight. And we're going to go up here 16 and a half. That's eight and a quarter. So we're going to draw a straight line there. Might have been wise to do this before I put the foam on too, you guys. Might have been maybe at the same time I put my little F on there. I should have done this, right? You could do it. It's not too late. Uh, what you don't want to do is try to do this with your stuffing, your padding, <laughs> your loose padding on the front. That's, but that's not a good idea. Okay, so 16.8. 16.8. Let me draw a straight line this way. We're good to go. Let's start with our seat first, which is the harder one. Okay, hey guys, um, I'm going to give you a another little tip. It's really important. On your Dacron, on your bonded Dacron, I'm choosing bonded Dacron because I think it's going to be a little bit more stable than the cotton. Cotton, um, the problem with bonded Dacron mm -hmm. if, is if you don't split it, I split this. This is the key, you guys. If you split it, we don't, I'm not, not let's, I'm not necessarily looking for a lot of batting on this. It's about as batted out as it can be. What I'm looking at, if you see these points over here where there's a little wood showing, I'm looking for the, I'm looking to something to cover that. And I've chosen the burl, I've chosen the Dacron, a half a layer of Dacron because it's going to be easy to cut. That's why I split it. A full layer, I don't want to put a, a scissor cut on this. And remember, I can't bring it around the edge. So this is a problem. You know, problem solving is a big thing in upholstery. So I'm giving you a lot of tips on this little job. Usually the little jobs, you know, kind of surprise me even with all the knowledge that you need for it. So I'm going to cover this. I'm just going to, I'm just going to cut this now to show you. Look at this. I could do this with my hand. You cannot do the one inch. It's only the half inch that you can do that with. Okay, so I'm going to try to do this to the camera. Let's try to do the side first. Okay, what you want to do is you want to hold and trim. And you want to trim. You want the decor just to come out to the edge of the wood, right? Just feathered to the edge of the wood. So that way there, if it does go around, it's not going to impact at all. And I, I want to try to get this on loose. I don't want to attach it in any way. And I might even put a little glue in there. I'm not sure yet. I don't like using the glue, but I thought this was going to stick a little bit better to this. Let's just see. Now I'm going to trim it all the way around. I just want I just want that little piece of wood to be covered that the staples kind of divot it out like we were talking about earlier. I think it's going to be fine because the fabric is so heavy. Oh, beautiful. I really like this, you guys. So I'm just going to go right for it. Now I'm going to take... Um, I, I have my reference. I'm going to look down here. That's the F. It's even marked on the foam. And I'm going to just even that out a little bit. This is going to put on, you got your front lined up. You're going to put this on just like you would a sheet at home on your bed. If you make your bed. Some people don't make their own beds. Lucky them, right? Making a bed's probably the hardest thing you can do, right? Everybody? So I got my front. I'm looking at that. I'm just going to like a sheet. I'm going to try to get it as, as close as I can with that first attempt because you can't, you don't want to be lifting this off because the day crown will come with you. So any adjustment from now on is going to be like this, a hand adjustment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the side first to see if I'm lined up there. I got about another half inch, so I'm going to bring it this way a half of an inch. That looks good. As a matter of fact, 
let's see on the other side another half inch on the other side and we're good now I'm going to see the front I'm off by about an inch that's a lot for me in the first time so let's just go like this still off wow ah, we're getting there see the adjustment you're not you don't want to take it off and try again take it off try again It'll drive you crazy anyhow so I'm right where I want to be so I'm going to pin tack or pin staple I'm not putting the staple all the way in staples like a little sideways okay just be careful doing this if you guys are using a tack a hammer and tacks that's fine too but you're not putting them in all the way it's just your first pinning okay then I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it over now and look at look at the bottom here and and then line it up and then put a little pin pin staple in there and maybe another one here and another one here. remember that you started on the front that's important you start on the front um, now I'm gonna just line this up and then I'm gonna do the side pin staple the sides now no this isn't the normal fashion on a non um, plaid like fabric or plaid fabric you don't usually do, you're not usually putting a staple in the center of the side yet okay but I'm gonna do a kind of I want to hold my pattern because I, I like the way it looks I like the positioning so I'm just to hold the pattern okay now what did I say you start on the front first and you went to the back now you have to go back to the front for your first stretching Okay, and, I, and I'm not sure how much I have to stretch this. I, I have to kind of evaluate that as I go along. But what I'm, what I'm trying to do is keep the middle one in for now. Keep the middle. I have to show you guys, right? So I have to turn it. I'm not usually. I have to show you. Can, you guys can see that, right? So I'm focused. <laughs> the other thing on <laughs> another challenging part, you've got a square pattern with round corners. So what you have to do is you have to distinguish between okay this is the center of the of the curve this is the beginning of the curve this is the end of the curve this is important I do this automatically but for you guys I want to show you this is the it, it middle of the curve this is the beginning this is the end of the curve okay so that means that you don't want to be stapling right here right now you want to stop believe it or not just in this small section for now okay but now we're stretching we're stretching to that point so I'm just going to try to show you stretch oh I think I like that I helped it a little bit my hand so I'm gonna I'm just gonna put that all the way in and then I'm gonna give it a stretch this way all the way now watch I'm gonna do this side stretch it I'm not going this is key key is not going too far don't don't go too much look at that you guys what do you think huh nice Okay, now I'm going to do the back in the same fashion. And I'm not going to go any further than that last staple that I put in the front, right? So I'm going to give this, now I can get a different uh, angle on it to maybe get a better stretch. And I'm not over stretching this at all. This particular one, this particular fabric does not need to be over stretched. And every fabric is different that way. You have to get a feel for that, you guys. Let me just give that a little stretch. Okay, let's just take a look at that. Oh, I like it. You guys see that? Okay, now the sides. I want to keep my middle on the side, so I'm going to go off. I'm going to go off one side, and it doesn't matter which side you start in. Um, how you break it up into a half to that point that I talked about, no further, right? Middle, end of curve, beginning of curve. Let's just mark this for you, right? So keep those curves open for now, and you'll see why in a minute. Okay, so I'm going to stretch to that line I just showed you. Staple. Stretch to that line I just showed you. Staple. And I'm going to staple this. Moment of truth is coming up here. Which, which, are, the, which are the curves. Okay, let's just see how that looks. I like this. You can't fail this, but I like the way this fails. And I like the way that the fabric is working with our foam and that one inch foam on the bottom. If the one inch foam wasn't on the bottom, you would actually feel the hollow. I don't think you'd hear it. You'd feel it, which is even worse. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the back. And I'm going to take, in the middle of this curve, I am going to try to even up the fabric on both sides. Look at that, you guys. See? And I'm stretching, I'm stretching, I'm stretching. 
and I'm going to staple sideways. Watch, let me show you that. I stapled sideways for a reason. I, I want to keep my options open for a pleat. There's a pleat that has to go in there. Now what I'm going to do is go to the next spot and even that out. Oh, this stuff's working out beautifully, you guys. And that worked out great, and I'm going to sta I'm going to keep stapling. So, so what happened was when I stretched that, this has such a nice stretch to it. All my pleats, you have you have some pleats, but they're, they're this way. So I have no pleats around here. So what that means is it's going to sit really nicely on the frame. I'm really surprised at the stretch I'm getting out of this. Let's just do this one, and that's just show you. Yeah, huh? That is awesome. That is awesome. I love this fabric. So let's do this side. Again, you're going in the middle and trying to get the balance the uh, you know extra fabric out on both sides and then staple. Staple. So right here I've got a little overlap, a little bit more than I don't like. So I'm going to take out one of these staples that I put in and I'm going to just get that down a little bit more. There we go. Now the front. Now I just want to show you again. So there's my center line, right? I'm going right to that, right to that. As a matter of fact, look at that, how that pattern lines up to that center line. That was an accident. I wish I could say I did that on purpose, but that would be lying. But I'm taking the second one, evening up, right? And then, right? Got one more, you guys. Stretch that. That's the key. That first stretch is key. And if you've got it even, if you have too much on one side, you may you have to do it over again. Because you won't be able to pleat, get these pleats to disappear like I have. Need more staples. And we're still using our quarter inch staples, which is really important on this. Wow. I look on the distances on there. Let's just get, I just need one more staples as luck would have it, right? One more, I think. I was right here. Make sure. Now I'm going to trim this. I am going to trim this as close as I can get to the staples. to the inside back now. Same thing. Now I was debating on whether I should put any cotton on this at all or Dacron on this at all, but I figured why not take, take it wouldn't hurt because um, I usually tell people advise against not covering directly over foam anyhow. Uh, but I was thinking it didn't, for that, only for that reason um, that the fabric would walk if you don't do this or it could walk, meaning every time you sit down the fabric catches on the back of a, of a an abrasive surface that just stops walking and then you get problems, right? That's the only reason I'm putting it on here. I think it would have taken it well. It's a temptation, you guys, not to do it, but it would have, the fabric would have taken just over the foam on this one. So I, I get my top out. I look on my top of my inside back, right? And I'm gonna just, you know, like the blanket. And I'm going to look for my side first because I want that to be okay. That's let's see. Okay, I'm going to pin staple. I'm not going to pin anything yet, actually. I'm just going to do this up and down for us to make sure. Wow, do I get that? I'm going to staple that because that's perfect. Pin, pinning, right? I'm going to turn this over like so. I have that perfect, you guys. It's perfectly lined up. Now what you're going to find is that the less filling, the less fussing. So I, I think I'm going to have an easier time putting this on than I did the seat because there's not much filling. Okay, that, that's a kind of a rule of thumb. So let's do our sides. Let's pin tack our sides. Take another look at it. 
know what I'm doing here, you guys. I'm trying to make sure that I got my top. That I can see my top readily. So look at that, how nice and balanced that is. Isn't that nice? Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm not going to make my markings here like I showed you on the seat. I'm just going to, you guys know that you should be able to, as you, as you increase your skill, you'll be able just to have that in your mind's eye, that that's the beginning of the curve. You want to staple, beginning of the curve, I'm stretching two ways, I'm stretching this way and this way, and then I'm coming back. Staple. I'm going to come back down here, I'm going to take my pin staple out, and I'm going to stretch it. Take my pin staple out, stretch it, staple. And from, from the middle staple out to the bottom, to that point, the curve, I'm going to staple. I'm going to do the same thing up top. Staple, staple, staple. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to stretch this. And I want to show you guys something. Another tip. I think I, I count at least three or four tips in this series that really will help you guys out with your upholstering skills. Sometimes we go so fast as, a, as professional upholsters, we don't realize what we're doing. I'm going to show you a little trick here. So I'm going to staple, I'm, I'm going to two-way stretch here first and then staple here. But I'm going to release, but look what happens, how loose that is. If you want, you can take a little extra step and pin staple that down so that when you do this stapling, it's almost perfect for you. You just have to, you know, stretch it up just a little bit like so, right? And I, I did the same thing down here extra staple that made my made my sides much easier okay so now let's do that this part right in the middle stretch and then and then right go to our middle make sure we have an equal amount of fabric on both sides and then split it up again and just mow it right along it's a little easier because of the lack of filling or, or not as much filling Let's just take a look at that. Wow. I tell you, you know, it looks it looks like an African shale, doesn't it? I said it was Native American, but it could be African. Doesn't it look like a, a shale? You know, it's, it's cool. I love projects that are a little different like this that come through the door. I really do. And I just saw a little bit of an imperfection there, so I moved it just. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stretch that to the side a little bit more. My eye picked up something that was just, now it's perfect. I can't get any better than that. So let's trim it up from our outside back. These staples to be used for stretching your fabric should come out. You don't need them anymore. Now I'm going to set this up to take a look. Let's bring the um, chair up now. Okay guys, let's just see how this is going to fit before we go to the outside back. I couldn't ask for a better fit, as nice and snug. You guys see that? Isn't that amazing? Okay, we can wipe our chalk off later, but that fit perfect. So let's take this down and let's go to our outside back. guys I only have a very small this is the outside back and you see this through the chair and there's a very small 
opening there so I have to be really careful with my staple work I have to bring it almost all the way out there and then my scissor work has to be right on and I'm a little worried I'm going to take just a little Daycron and just um, put it in there um, and I, I don't want to be anywhere near the edges because I, I don't have you know it fit you saw how it fit it fit perfect I don't want anything to impede on that so I, the fabric is heavy I can't fold the fabric Usually I would fold the fabric. I can't fold this fabric because it's too heavy. It's not going to fit on the chair. So I got my outside back here, my top, my top, right? See how important it is to mark your, your covers? So let's, let's mark that. Let's get our up and down pretty well situated. Situated. Let's just see where we are here. And do remember how close this was that we had more. See this big diamond here and this big diamond here? It's perfect. I can just start stapling right here. So another thing that worked to our advantage on the outside is that I didn't have to fold it. So let's get moving. All right, let me just check the top up too for being, just want to make sure that it's straight there. Beautiful. Now we're going to staple this. Seal the deal right here. Really close. It has to be really close. This way. Give it a stretch. I have to say, you guys, the tips that I've been giving you, the at least three or four that I picked up on, I, I think there were m many more. Um, that's what makes the online classes, I know it sounds like a sales pitch, but it's true. The online classes really do offer so many of those tips within a class. And I think that if you go on the Facebook, Broadway Upholstery Facebook forum, you'll see people commenting on that about how that's enhanced. The people who have been upholstering for a long time, that's enhanced, enhanced their abilities. And for people who are starting out, it prevents a lot of problems, you know, mistakes that you're going to make. Like just the fact that I can't, I, it goes against my nature to do what I'm doing here. I can't fold this because there's no room. It's just a unique thing because the fabric is so thick. If this was a cotton cloth, I'd be folding it. And I don't have to do much stretching on this at all. That's what you guys are probably wondering. He's not even stretching that. It's, it's pretty flat. There's no padding. So. so I'm doing a little bit. If you see my hand working, I... Doing a little bit of stretch. Yeah. Okay, now the moment of truth, you guys. I have to be careful when I when I trim this. I don't want to cut into my other fabric. That's why I can't use a razor blade. That's this is where a sharp pair of scissors really comes in handy. It's your favorite pair, ideally, to trim this really close. and not cut into my inside back. This is fun, isn't it? I mean, sometimes I lose sight of that because it's, it's my job too. It's where I earn my income. But um, I'm having a lot of fun doing this particular piece. There's a lot to do with the fabric, I think. I wish you guys could feel this fabric. It, it's a wool, definitely a wool. But it reminds me of um, I said Native American, it could be Native American, but it reminds me now more of African um, prints, uh, African friends. Okay, let's see how that fits on the chair. Okay guys, moment of truth. This fit perfect, it really did. Now, your challenge is to get these little brads. It's your only way to do it. These little brads, and a brad, what, what makes a brad different from a nail is that it has a small head, which is really important when you're putting it through fabric. I'm, I'm kind of encouraged that it's a wool. I know that, I know that this is going to slip through the fabric pretty good. I'm a little nervous. I don't have much wood on the other side, so I want to angle my, my brad so that I don't skim the wood on the other side, which is what makes this chair unusual is that recessed back. And that's, they took from the French. The French uh, were the first ones to come out with that. It's a really classy look but very difficult to pull off. So I'm, I'm a little concerned that my tack 
my, my, this might come through the other side, but I, I, have to, I have to give it a shot. So, so another thing about these brads is they come, um, they could come with oil on them, machine oil, so you might want to, I already cleaned these ones off, and I, it's nice that I have black um, because you won't see any oil, but it's a good idea to run this through a piece of fabric at least three times to get the residue off. There's another tip, you guys, seriously. I'm glad I thought about it to tell you, but what it, on the online classes, they would say, the student would say, oh look, they might have even taken a tack and used it, or Brad, and then left that residue, and then I would have said, oh, this is how you do it. it. Usually those things come up a lot in the online classes, not so much on the YouTube videos, because we don't think like that. Posters, you know, you learn something and you forget, you forget about it, you don't teach it. So I'm taking this really slow, I'm, I'm angling it, I'm trying to show you guys at the same time, it's just so I'm going to feel the back, ah, nothing came through, Whew, what a relief. So I, I have it angled, now I got a problem here, right, look, the, 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 even though this is a small headed brad, it's holding the fabric down, so I'm going to take my trusty regulator, regulators are used, you guys, and we only have the professional grade ones on the online store, so check it out. And you can see this one's a little bent, which is okay. It's bent because of the pressure that I've been using to do things like this. This is a professional tool. That's the only thing that we'll use that we can use. It's sharp at the end, and it's got and it's really strong in this area. I'll show you how it works. You push push in around around the tech, and you lift. Did you hear that pop? I was talking. The next one, I'm not going to be talking. I want to let you listen. When you hear it pop like that, you know what that popping sound sounds is. All the threads going back. They're not broken threads. If you broke the threads, you probably wouldn't have any pop. If you, you're going through the threads, then you take your regulator and you push it and you hear that little pop. And that means you did a good job and, and it didn't go through the other side. So great. So let's take another one over here to show you. Now I think you're going to get a better angle on what I'm trying to do. I'm making sure definitely I have the wood on the, um, underneath the fabric here and I'm angling it. I would say I'm about a 10 degree angle or 12 degree angle. It wants to, it wants to, wants to move out. And I'm not sure about this one. So let me push it back this way. See now the brad, the brad's bent over, which is going to happen, you guys. So you got to be ready for that. I'll get that out. That's no good anymore. Let's just do that on camera. Glad things like that happen. You can see that you know I'm not perfect. <laughs> I want to do one more for you though, and then I'm going to do all the other ones off camera, and then uh, show you the final product. Let's do one more. Come on now. Very good and good. Now listen. You know, it didn't make the popping noise like the other one made, but trust me, it was there. I don't know if you guys heard it. That's that's the back. Now we'll do the seat. So there we are, our bentwood frame rocker and our African motif. Beautiful. Thanks.